Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see The Naked City. I'm Bert Leonard, the producer. This story was not photographed in a studio. Quite the contrary. The actors played out their roles on the streets and in the buildings of New York itself. Max! Max! Look out! Max! Max! Look out! Honey, honey. You were dreaming. Must have been a loud one. Oh. Max, look out. That's what you said. I said that. Oh. It was the same dream again, wasn't it? Yes. Why don't you tell me the truth? Betty, what is the truth? What you're not telling me? Oh. Mm. A rattle in her throat, that's what the truth is. A set of excuses we carry around like, like skeleton keys. Betty, it's all over with. It's a, it's a finished part of our lives. Let's not unlock it again. I know now that you didn't do it. <sighs> Doesn't really matter, does it? And you know, when I was up there, I thought that when I got out, I was gonna hold you by the hand. I was never gonna let you go. It's the only thing a man can hold on to in this world. A woman who loves him and who believes in him. Even though he is a murderer. Oh, excuse me. I'd better wait. That's all right. I'm Mrs. Fleischman. Well, Mrs. Fleischman, what can we do for you? Lieutenant, do you believe that sometimes innocent men go to prison? Well, it's like white tigers. If I see a white tiger, I believe in white tigers. You know. I'm asking you to believe in white tigers. My husband. What's he up for? He was released last year. So, what's the beef? I want his name cleared. Mrs. Fleischman, that ain't a white tiger. That's a dead tiger. What was the charge? Manslaughter. Oh. He was driving. He'd been drinking and he hit a little girl. Don't look like that, Lieutenant. He loves children. We have a little boy of our own. If you could only know what this did to my husband. I got the whole picture. You're just like everyone else. You've got the picture you want to see, not the true picture. Look, Mrs. Fleischman, I don't know your husband's case. You say he served a sentence. Did anything come up during that time or since? Any new evidence that would make you come up here and tell us that? No. It's just that I know Arnold, my husband. And I know Max. Who's Max? Max Bookwald. He was with Arnold that night. In the car? No. At the bar. But lately in his sleep, Arnold keeps calling out, Max, look out! It's as if Max was driving, not Arnold. What does your husband say about this? Nothing. If only you could talk to him, Lieutenant. If only you could make him tell you. Tell us what? That he's innocent. Jimmy. Yes, sir. Jimmy, this is Mr. Fleischman. Mr. Fleischman, this is Detective Halloran. Hello, Mr. Fleischman. Mrs. Fleischman has something on her mind. Well, would you come this way, please? And when was the last time you cried? I guess she don't like me, huh? I wouldn't worry about it, sir. I guess it's just her first impression. You're doing much 
better. Here we go, down. All right. I got you. I got you. Mr. Flashman? Yeah. I want to figure talk to you a minute. Miss Harris? Police, obviously. You mean it shows? What do you want? Mr. Flashman, uh, this wasn't our idea. Your wife asked us to come over and talk to you. Says you're innocent. You can prove it. You know, every minute I waste with you, I could be working with some child. So unless you've got a warrant of some kind, I'd like you to leave right now. Talk pretty hard for a guy who's got a dead kid on his record. I went to prison. I got what I deserved. Satisfied? We are. But your wife isn't. Is that police business? No, no, it isn't. But she came down to the precinct this morning and, well, she got kind of upset. We tried to calm her down. We had to agree to at least come over here and talk to you. Okay. We've talked. Anything else? No. Hi. Hi there. Mr. Halloran, may I talk to you? Arnold just phoned. He's terribly angry with me. Look, Mrs. Fleischman. Oh, are you Mrs. Halloran? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I can't let his feelings stand in the way. Not anymore. Somebody's got to stay with this thing. Mrs. Fleischman, it's exactly as I told you this morning. We've no jurisdiction, no reason to get involved in this. You are a human being, aren't you? Don't you have a lawyer? I've spoken to him. Ancient history. To hear him talk, you'd think Arnold's file was something that Hannibal carried across the Alps on an elephant. Well then, Mrs. Fleischman, I don't know what you can expect of me, really. Honestly, what is there I can do now? I don't know. Won't you come inside? I'll make some coffee. No, thank you. I'd better... I'd better go home. Lenny will be getting home from school. Could you possibly talk to Max? No, Mrs. Fleischman. Your husband made it very clear to me. He feels he got exactly what he deserved. Would you be good enough to call me a cab, please? Jimmy will drive you home, Mrs. Fleischman. Thank you. As the days passed, Halloran was haunted by the memory of Betty Fleischman's hollow eyes and the echo of her desperate voice. Lieutenant? Yeah? I'd like your okay to prepare a UF-49 requisition. To the uh, State Department of Correction? That's right. What case? A Fleischman case, sir. Got something? No, I just want to review the case for him. Poke around a little bit, maybe talk to a few people. I'll do it when I'm off duty. You're a believer, aren't you, Jimmy? Okay, kid. It'll be good for you in the long run. In fact, it might even make you a better sleuth. Oh, and uh, while you're at it, dig out a lab report for the night of the accident and pull a DD-52 from the BCI. Thank you, sir. Your name Teddy Simpson? Yeah. My miner just quit, so let me guess. You're the cops. That's right. No drink? No, no drink. You don't mind if I keep busy, do you? I go big business in old fashioned starting around 5 o'clock. You know a man named Arnold Fleischman? There's that tragic case. What about Fleischman? I hear he's out. He's working in a children's home now. A few years ago, he was a pink-haired boy in the toy business. Heading straight for the top. A new idea every day. You know, brilliant, just plain brilliant. Even with an anchor around him, he was on high boost, zoomed straight to the top. What do you mean, with an anchor around him? He used to start his New Year's drinking in July. 
Ah, uh, but he was nice people. Well, he's working with crippled children now. I guess he just couldn't live with himself after what happened. What did happen? You guys ought to know better than anybody. No, I mean in here that night. Four of them came in from the factory about 6 o'clock. Sat down there. Fleischman's Evans singer Buckwall to celebrate. Fleischman had just gotten a raise. That's how it was with him. One week a raise, next week he'd tell the brass off and they'd boot him back into place. With him, it was either up or it was out. Nothing in between. Anyway, they came in and he was standing drinks for the crowd. Other guys from the plant kept drifting in and out. Finally, about 8.30, they'd just about all gone home to their wives. Except for Fleischman. And Buckwall? Yeah, only it's Mr. Buckwall now. Big man at the plant. Played it safe all the way to the top. Funny thing about those two, they look like brothers. But they couldn't be more different. Did they leave together? Fleischman was parked right outside. Said he dropped Buckwall off. Buckwell told him he was too stoned to drive. They were arguing about it when they walked out of here. Did you, uh, did you actually see Fleischman get in his car? No. Uh, I saw them outside by the car arguing, then I got busy in here. Teddy's place. Your name Halloran? Yeah. It's for you. Thanks. Halloran. The paperwork's come through on Fleischman. There's something here that hits me kind of funny, Jimmy. The eyewitness report. Kid's mother, you know? She said she's crossing the street with the kid when she sees this car bearing down on her. Now, she sees the silhouette of the driver in the light from the corner lamp. And he's wearing a hat. So? Well, I got the mobile lab unit report here, too. Now, they picked up Fleischman 10 minutes later in front of his apartment. They checked his clothes and all his car, but I don't see no entry here about any hat. He's nailed red-handed, so nobody made anything out of this hat thing. But I thought you might want to check it. Yeah, Frank, thanks. When Fleischman left that night, was he wearing a hat? I tell you, Fleischman was the kind of a guy who liked to feel the wind in his hair. He never wore a hat in his life. Buckwall? He lives in a hat. Mr. Martin, I'll check on it right away. We're checking into the Fleischman case. Fleischman? Arnold Fleischman? That's right. So what's the check-in do? Yes, Mr. Buckwald. Did you run the dies on 916 yet? Mr. Buckwald, just yesterday I asked you if... I told you to go ahead. But Mr. Buckwald... Go ahead, go ahead, run them now and hurry up about it. The minute they come through, I want to know about it. Like that with everybody around here. Mr. Martin, please. Mr. Martin, this is Max. We're running the dies on 916 now. I'd say in about an hour or so. Yes, sir. The minute they come through. So? Why'd you let him drive if you knew he was drunk? Oh, my, my brother's keeper. You stated you walked home from the bar that night. It took you about 20 minutes. You arrived home about 10 to 9. That's right, isn't it? Whatever I said is in the record. Go look up the record. Well, I have, Mr. Buckwald. And there's a discrepancy. 
It's none of my business. Yeah, you're right about that. It's our business. Suppose that night you didn't walk home from the bar. Suppose that night you drove. Suppose you were lying. Get out of here. Get out of here, you lousy two-bit cop. And other people out of you, and I'll sue you and everybody downtown. Now, you listen to me. I'm not one of your little tin soldiers, Buckwald. So I'd walk very carefully if I were you. You can't harass me. There are laws to protect us from people like you. Now get out of here. from a small dance to a theater evening. High belted waist, full skirt, softly big body in red with <laughs> Mr. Orbach, seated here, himself selected this charming dress of white, pure silk organza printed in enormous red flowers. The soft skirt has back fullness. The bodice is sequin sprinkled, giving it a fresh dew look. From Orbach's famous oval room, and it's priced at $69.95. The mystery of mink, interpreted here in a collared stone. Oh, Margot, dear, hurry, please. You're up next. Mr. Halloran? Yes. Don't be embarrassed. The girls don't mind. Well, I, I guess that's why I'm embarrassed. I warned you on the phone I might be busy when you arrived. Well, I didn't think it could wait. It's waited so long already, every minute seems to count now. Oh, Marta, number 13, not 22. Oh, please, dear, try. No. I don't mind that some of the girls can't read, but when they can't even count. You wanted to see me about Max? And Arnold Fleischman. Yes, I... I heard he was out of prison. The question is, should he have ever been in? I told you this number wasn't for me. Look at this waistline. Mrs. B. Oh, Marta, I'm sorry. We won't show that. Put on the other print. Mrs. Buckwald, you testified your husband arrived home about 10 to 9 that night. I know what I said, Mr. Halloran. I remember each and every word. But if you were wrong, if he arrived home, let's say, at 9 o'clock, just 10 minutes later, he still would have had time to have driven Arnold Fleischman to his house, left the car, and then walked home. I know. I walked it myself before I came here. Mrs. Buckwald, I'm asking you to think back, to reconsider. I'm sorry, Mr. Halloran. What's done is done. It's better to forget, if we can. You're going to stand by him, then? Max? Yes, Max! I divorced Max, Mr. Halloran, right after Arnold went to prison. Or didn't you know? <laughs> I told you to leave me alone. I know the truth, Mr. Fleischman. I wonder. You didn't kill that child. Didn't I? No, Max Buckwall did. Can you prove it? No. Not without breaking him down or getting his ex-wife to testify against him. Well, what do you want from me? I want you to admit it. Admit my innocence? That's right. What good will that do? Look, uh, Mr. Fleischman, if I'm right about you, I won't stop. I won't rest till the record's straightened out and your name is cleared. My name is cleared. I've done my punishment. Oh, certainly you have, Mr. Fleischman. You've done your punishment, and your wife is still doing hers. And your son. I think you mean that. I mean, uh, 
I think you care about it. That's right, I do. I'll tell you something, Mr. Fleischman. A week ago, I didn't want any part of this. But now I'm in it. I'm involved. And I'm not going to let go of it. Yes, you are. I'm going to tell you why. Like a cigarette. You see, this didn't come to me until my last year in prison. I kept, I kept having this nightmare. This nightmare that I wasn't, I wasn't alone in the car. And I kept remembering, as drunk as I'd been, that there was someone else with me. And I began to dream the same dream over and over again. And in the dream, I was slumped in the seat. Max was driving. And in the dream, I always sat up. And as I did, I saw the little girl in the lights. And I screamed, look out, Max. Then I was thrown back into my seat, and the dream became dark. The warden helped me make a request for a copy of the accident report. And I studied that report, Mr. Halloran. I studied every dot and every dash. Then I discovered the business of the driver wearing the hat. I guess you did, too. Mm. Well, I sent that report back, and I forgot about it. You forgot about it? That's right. Even though you knew you didn't do it? I was a lot drunker than Max. It was my car. It was my party. I was just as guilty as he was whether or not my hands were actually on the steering wheel. But look, he, he deliberately put the blame on you. Mr. Haller and I believe that I've come out of this a better man. I hope so. And I've learned to bear the guilt. But Max can't. He sits in that depressing little office hour after hour, surrounded by beauty but seeing none of it hating himself, hating everybody around him. Well, he's, he's a hollow man, Mr. Haller, and a, a hollow, pitiable man. Now, how can you be angry with him? Look, uh, Mr. Fleischman, it's not a question of anger. It's a question of getting the truth out in the open, the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And that's right. So that you can stir up all the sorrows that the mother of that dead child has been trying to forget. No, Mr. Halloran, I, I believe there's something beyond truth, something far greater. That's pity. Look, uh, Mr. Fleischman, you don't think, you certainly don't think I'm going to let this ride just because you... Yes, I do. You're going to walk out of here and forget that you ever saw me or that you ever talked to me. But look, your wife, and your son. Now, they want your name cleared. Someday they'll understand. And it won't matter. In the meantime, we're closer than we've ever been before. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Fleischman. Where to, Buckwald? No, Frank, you might as well head on back to the office. The office? Yeah. Hey, you all right, kid? I'm not sure, Frank. I'm not sure about much of anything right now. I mean, about what's truth and What's justice? I... I just don't know anymore. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them.